Hello, and welcome back to another lesson on thermodynamics. We are still on the unit on temperature and heat. So in the previous uh, lesson, we have discussed about thermal expansion, wherein uh, we uh, discuss about uh, linear and volume uh, thermal expansions. So the amount of expansion that, that an object undergoes due to uh, heat uh, or changes in temperature uh, depends on the coefficient of expansions of a material. And each material have different coefficients of expansion. So for this lesson, we will be uh, talking about how to measure the quantity of heat in temperature changes. So heat is basically defined as the energy in transit between two bodies with different temperatures. So usually the normal or natural flow of heat is from the high temperature object or body to a lower temperature uh, body. So heat basically causes a change in temperature. And there are two basic ways that you can change the temperature of an object. The first one is by doing work on it, such as uh, rubbing your hands together. That is actually mechanical in the work and it's converted into heat. You're doing uh, work. And the second one is by direct heating. So you have a heat source and you uh, transfer the heat from the heat source to the object. So the quantity of heat and temperature changes is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature or to change the temperature of an object. And since heat is energy, it's actually, this unit is actually related to uh, the unit of energy, which is joules. So the standard unit for heat is calorie the symbol of CAL, and one calorie is 4.186 joules. So there's also another uh, unit, a more uh, familiar unit to you, which is the food calorie found at the back of uh, certain food products. It usually has a capital K or, but if you see a, a food calorie, it's actually equivalent to 1,000 of heat calories or one kilo calories. So the quantity of heat is uh, designated by the variable Q. That's the amount of heat. M is the mass of the object. C is what we call the specific heat of an object. It varies with different materials, similar to the coefficients of expansion. So as of now, we now have every material now have uh, three uh, constants. It has a coefficient of linear expansion, a coefficient of volume expansion, and now a specific heat. So delta T is just a change in temperature. So if you have a material with mass M, initial temperature T naught, and a specific heat C, and if it absorbs heat or it releases heat, then that will cause its temperature to change to a different uh, value. So if you have a positive Q or positive quantity of heat, that means that the heat is absorbed by the body or the object. And a negative Q means the heat is released by the body or the object. So if ever you are not given the mass of an object, but instead you are given the number of moles. So the mass is related to the number of moles of an object by the quantity called uh, capital M, which is the molar mass. If you multiply the molar mass and the specific heat, then you get the molar heat capacity. It's basically the specific heat of one mole of that material. And we can now write the quantity of heat in terms of uh, when or if the given value is the number of moles. So if the given value is the number of moles, you use the number of moles times the molar heat capacity, capital C. So uh, again, the unit, for specific heat is joules per kilogram Kelvin, and it's just the same as joules per kilogram Celsius degree, because the change in temperature in Kelvin is the same as the change in temperature in Celsius degree or degree Celsius. Okay, so the first column shows the specific heat of a material. The second column is the molar mass, 
And the third column is the molar heat capacity, which is, which is just the product of specific heat capacity and the molar mass. So you get the molar heat capacity by multiplying these two columns. Okay, so you will notice that the specific heat of a material depends linearly or directly or is directly proportional to the amount of heat, meaning the larger specific heat, the larger the C value, the larger the amount of heat needed to change the temperature of that object. So for instance, if you have aluminum, if you compare that to say iron, so iron is almost a half of the specific heat of the aluminum, meaning uh, you will only need a uh, half, one half the amount of heat for iron as compared to aluminum if you want to try to change the temperature, uh, say from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So, or if they have the same, if they have the same, uh, if both of them have the same mass and change the temperature, then uh, iron will only need a smaller amount of heat to change its temperature as compared to aluminum. So we will explore uh, examples on practicality or applications of specific heat in uh, the later slides. So also take note uh, for take note the specific heat of water and the specific heat of ice. So even though ice is just solid water, but both of them are they have different specific heat values. In fact, ice has half, half of the specific heat value of uh, water. So this means that it's easier to change the temperature of ice as compared to the, as compared to water. So for example, if you want to change the temperature of ice by five degrees Celsius, and if you want to also to change this, that the temperature of water by 5 degrees Celsius, then you will only need half the amount of heat for ice as compared to water. So take note, the larger the specific heat value, the larger the amount of heat needed to change the temperature of, an, of that object. Okay, let's now go directly to an example. So this example is uh, a basic example, heat released by water. So how much heat must be removed, must be removed or must be released from water with mass 0 0.10 kilograms or 100 grams to change its temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. So you're actually trying to make the water cold here. So that's how uh, a refrigerator uh, uh, works basically so it it uh, removes heat from water so that the water will become cold so in this case our water will be releasing a certain amount of heat q so let's try to solve for that amount so we use the formula uh, we know the mass of the water 0 0.10 kilograms we know its specific heat 4190 joules per kilogram Celsius degree we know the change in temperature change in temperature is final minus initial so the final temperature is zero Initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And you will get a value of a negative value because this is heat that is released by the object or by the body. And our body here is a body of water. So negative 10,475 joules or uh, approximately negative 10.48 kilojoules or approximately negative 2,500 calories. So that one. in terms of the SI unit of heat, uh, negative 2,500 calories. Okay, so how about we do the reverse? So how about uh, we have water with the same mass as in the previous example, 0 0.10 kilograms, but instead from 25 to 0, it has an initial temperature of 0. And what is the final temperature when it, when it absorbs 2,500 calories of heat? So in the previous example, we know that when water at 25 degrees Celsius, uh, releases negative 2,500 calories of heat, then its temperature will become zero. But now this is the reverse. So, of course, <laughs> we expect that the answer should, the answer to this should be uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So first, let's convert uh, 2,500 calories. So that's approximately 10,465 joules. 
and this is our uh, equation for the quantity of heat, mass of the water, uh, C of the water, change in temperature of the water. So we know actually the quantity of heat. It's given by 2,500 calories or 10,465 joules. We know the mass is given. We know the specific heat of water. We know the initial temperature. The only unknown here is the final temperature, T. So solve for T. So divide both sides by M mass and specific heat. Transpose the T naught and you will get this result. So substitute the values. T naught is 0 degrees Celsius. We have Q here, the amount of heat or the quantity of heat, mass, and the specific heat of water. And you will get an, a value of 24.98 degrees Celsius or approximately 25 degrees Celsius as we have expected. So that one. So these are the different scenarios for uh, this equation. It can also, uh, the problem could also include finding the mass, but it could also also you could also have problems wherein the mass is unknown or the specific heat is unknown or the initial temperature is and you just need to uh, rederive the formula in that in those cases so for our last example uh this is an application um how important is to know uh the values of specific heat so you have a 0 0.25 kilograms or 250 grams a frying pan uh, with an initial temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. How much heat must be added to the pan to raise its temperature to 100 degrees Celsius if it's made of A, iron, and B, aluminum? Okay, so both the iron and the aluminum here have the same mass, have the same initial temperature, and have the same final temperature. They only differ in the specific heat values. So for letter A, the amount of heat uh, at absorbed by iron to change its temperature from 25 to 100 degrees celsius is given by this one so the only thing that differs with the two is the specific heat values so they have the same mass they have the same uh, change in temperature from 25 to 100 but the specific heat of uh, iron is 470 joules per kilogram celsius degree and give us uh, calculating all of this uh, uh, Calculating from these values, we get 8,000 uh, joules or 8.81 kilojoules. So you do the same for aluminum. For aluminum, the specific heat of aluminum is 910 joules per kilogram Celsius uh, degree. So that's the, that's the only difference. It's actually almost times two, almost double the specific heat of iron, which means you will also you will get almost double the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of aluminum from 25 to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the reason why most of our frying pans are made of iron because you only need a smaller amount of heat to raise the temperature of iron from 25 to 100 degrees Celsius as compared to aluminum, which is more than double. So if you use an aluminum frying pan, it will, be, it will not be practical because you will supply twice the amount of heat, twice the LPG, so twice the heat. Uh, there are other metals which are uh, which have much lower specific heat as compared to iron, such as copper. So the uh, specific heat of copper is actually uh, 390 uh, joules per kilogram Celsius degree. So there are also some uh, copper, copper frying pans that you see in the market. But it's much, uh, it's much uh, expensive as compared to iron frying pans. Uh, there are also two metals which have a very uh, small specific values, uh, namely lead and gold. So lead and gold have uh, almost the same value of specific heat, around 130, 130 joules per kilogram Celsius degree. But lead is poisonous and gold is super expensive so again both of them are not practical so the most practical uh metal to use as a frying pan is iron okay so that is it for this uh lesson so i hope you have learned something about how to calculate 
how to quantize or how to quantify the amount of heat needed to change the temperature of an object. So I will see you again in the next lesson. Thank <music> you.